This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 24th day of May in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. Unicomer Guyana today turned the sod for its 33 million US dollar River Place commercial complex at Farm on the east bank of the Marara, marking the commencement of the single largest retail investment in the country. Sub regional managing director of Unicomer Vincent Gordon, in his address at the sod turning ceremony, said the multi million dollar project entails three phases and is being supported through financing from the Inter American Development Bank. The River Place commercial complex will feature a number of branded retail stores, in addition to a new Quartz mega store, among other facilities. In 18 months, this facility will transform into a state of the art retail facility complete with world-class brand names, restaurants, a gym, and much more. But more importantly, it will house our new Quartz Mega Store, uh, Ashley Home Store, and our Quartz Optical Store. Together, we're talking about 55,000 square feet for Quartz Ashley. Nothing like that has been seen in Guyana since um, up to now. Mr. Gordon also said the facility will form an important part of Guyana's infrastructural development and is a representation of Unicom's ongoing commitment to invest in Guyana and its people while delivering a retail experience that is second to none. Unicomer Global Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of the Board, Mario Simon, said Unicomer is pleased to further cement its investment in Guyana, having started operations in the country here in 1991. He said the commercial complex will be completed with a hotel in addition to 400 parking spaces. At the same time, we are under construction for our largest logistic park for our distribution center here in Houston, Guyana. It's going to begin with 110,000 square feet of warehouse, and it's currently being built to be finished and completed by in 18 months, I hope so, 12 months, eight months. Anyhow, we need it urgently because right now we're renting like six warehouses. And the IDB country representative Lorena Solorzano said the IDB was pleased to reach an agreement with Unicomer in April of this year to finance the mega project. She said a transformative project will undoubtedly help to shape the future of the east bank of the Marara Corridor, adding that it represents a significant milestone for the private sector in Guyana. And Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce Anish Waldron said the project augurs well for the development of the country. Organic investments such as this one coming out of the Unicorma Group lead to the adoption of new technologies, new processes and equipment that can improve productivity and efficiency. And this helps companies overall to, to produce more goods and services with the same amount of resources leading to overall economic growth. As companies like yours invest and expand in your operations, they often create new opportunities, thus stimulating employment opportunities in the economy and the incomes derived from this employment increases consumer spending. Unicomer has a large range of products and financial services across the countries that it operates in, including Quartz, Quartz Optical, Ready Cash and Ready Finance, the Ashley Furniture Store, Radio Shack, Lucky Dollar and Servitech. In Guyana, the company has 25 branches, and within the next 12 months, an additional four branches will be added. More news coming up in just a moment. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. 
or advice on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Two or more Lucosade 360 milliliter at participating outlets. Write your contact details on the back of the receipt and place them in the marked boxes nationwide. It's that simple. And you're on your way to energize your drive with Lucosade. This promotion runs April 12th to June 7th, 2024. Terms and conditions apply. After stinging nettles, stink and dirty, moderation, and soak and wine, it's time to cool down with Soka Star Patrice Roberts. Nesta and more at Cabisa Cool Out Beach Party. Link your crew as we close off the Genesis Independence Weekend the right and proper way. On Monday, the 27th of May, the holiday at Kingston Beachfront. Drinks, friends, and soca vibes. Admission $3,000 early bird. Cabisa Cool Out. Please drink responsibly. Well, the Guyana Police Force today said, based on the legal advice of its own legal advisor, attorney at law Mandel Moore, that there is insufficient evidence to charge former government minister Nigel Daramalal in relation to rape and sexual assault allegations that were filed against him recently by a former employee of the Ministry of Local Government. In a statement this afternoon, the police force said the legal advice provided by its in-house legal advisor was based on inconsistencies and discrepancies in the complainant's story. The police also claimed that there were also statements from several independent witnesses that totally contradict the complainant's story, which, according to the police, included alibi witnesses who placed Nigel Damalal in a different region on the date that the alleged incident occurred in September of 2020. The police said statements also disclosed that Nigel Daramalal is not the owner of the house where the alleged incident occurred in January of 2021 and he has no access to the house. According to the police, the disclosures from witnesses who provided information to the investigators resulted in there being insufficient credible evidence and no realistic prospect of conviction in the matters. Nigel Daramalal, the former government minister, had already denied the accusations. The police force public relations office could not say why advice was sought from the police force's own legal advisor as against the director of public prosecutions for such a high profile case involving a former government official who had previously been accused of a similar crime. The 28 year old woman who made the latest allegations of rape against Taramalal detailed her allegations of sexual assault to the media at a press conference two weeks ago. She held a press conference on the same day that she provided the police with her official complaint. Last year, Darmalal was forced to resign as a member of parliament and government minister after a teenage schoolgirl filed a sexual assault complaint against him. She eventually withdrew her complaint after the matter was sent to the director of public prosecutions for advice. With the complaint withdrawn, the DPP at the time indicated that charges could not be laid against him in relation to the case. Opposition leader Aubrey Norton confirmed today that his party will be staying away from this year's national flag raising ceremony to be held in Region 10 on Saturday night. Mr. Norton explained that although the event is being held in the town of Linden in Region 10, municipal and regional officials were never consulted about the national event or even offered to play a role in the planning. 
with the APNU AFC holding the majority on both the regional and municipal councils, Norton believes the move to completely leave the officials out of the planning of the event was deliberate and disrespectful to those leaders and to local democracy. The deliberate exclusion of regional officials from Region 10 from such a significant event is not only callous, but also gross disrespect to the principles of local and regional governance. We wish to emphasize that in previous years, during flag raising ceremonies in regions two and nine, in which the PPP forms the regional government, there was full participation of the respective regional officials. Mr. Norton said the disregard showed for the elected regional officials is unacceptable and undermines the spirit of inclusivity and unity that should characterize such national celebrations. It is evident that the current PPP regime is more interested in photo opportunities rather than genuine efforts towards fostering a united Guyana for all its citizens. This exclusionary approach only serves to deepen divisions and foster discord among our people. The opposition leader said the PPP taking the national flag raising ceremony to Linden is merely just a photo opportunity. He recalled the government's boycotting of the Linden Town Week celebrations, which concluded earlier this month. He contends that the government does not have the interest of the people of Linden at heart. In this circumstance, we will not attend any government organized independence celebration since to celebrate with the PPP government is to collude with those who are oppressing the people of Guyana. Yesterday, Vice President Barra Jagdio said the concerns raised by the opposition were misplaced and that the independent celebration will go ahead as planned. Over the last few years, the government has moved the independence flag raising ceremony to various regions. Excitement and win the chance of a lifetime with Lucose Energize Your Drive promotion. Enter to win a fully loaded Toyota CHR or a ton of cash. $500,000 and $250,000 respectively. respectively. Just purchase two or more Lucosade 360 milliliter at participating outlets. Write your contact details on the back of the receipt and place them in the marked boxes nationwide. It's that simple. And you're on your way to energize your drive with Lucosade. This promotion runs April 12th to June 7th, 2024. Terms and conditions apply. Mobile One is more than oil. It's many oils. It transforms at the molecular level. When cold, it's thicker than honey. When hot, it's thinner than water. Mobile One adapts and readapts to last longer. 16,000 kilometers between oil changes. That's your engine evolved. Solgan is the authorized distributor of mobile lubricants. Your last year, it was so nice. Me and them girls had real fun. It's the best party ever went on. I was a big man. Back by Pop on Demand, Team Extra presents the Bad Friday. June 22nd, 12, one man drag, and running live. 
Stitchy Fight Machine, Murphy Invasion Band, Love Connection, Genesis, Big B, Cali World Band, Aaron the Entertainer, Hot Smooth, and many more. Early bird tickets at $2,000 at Just New Size Boutique, White Castle Fish Shop, Fireside Suites, Extra Beer, Stabro, Compliments of Fireside Suites, Extra Energy Drink, and That's Extra the Beer. The Band's Birthday, Sunday, June 22nd, at the National Park. Oil company Sol Guyana Incorporated and the Guyana General Workers Union have signed the two-year collective labor agreement, paving the way for the company's workers to receive a 10% salary increase for this year and an additional increase of 5% next year. The signing took place at the Ministry of Labor. President of the GWU, Norris Switter, said in addition to those increases, the company's minimum wage is now set at $160,826. We are pleased to state that with the outcome of these negotiations, the new minimum wage of the employees at Sol will now be pegged at $160,826. That is for the year 2024. The new rates of meal allowances will be for breakfast $1,500 for lunch $1,700 and for dinner $1,700. The new rate for laundry allowance will be $4,000, that is for 2024. The new bursary award will be $60,000 per year. He said in addition to yearly incentives, the company will pay its employees three days paid leave once they work on statutory holidays. The GWU president said the company in approaching the union displayed the exemplary attitude that ought to be commended. From the outset, there was a high degree of not only maturity, but respect for both parties. Wherever respect is absent, there is chaos and there is confusion and there is conflict. Because of the absence of disrespect, there was orderliness throughout these negotiations. And Sol Guiano General Manager Earl Caribon said the agreement marked the end of a fruitful negotiation, which would be to the benefit of the unionized workers operating within the company. Yes, I think this collective agreement is indeed a, a good outcome. Um, I think we have been able to successfully land at a position where our unionized workers will be better off uh, based on this agreement. So I'm very happy with this outcome today. The company official also said that Saul Gena looks forward to the continuation of good relations with the union ahead. The parliamentary opposition has called for an annual day of remembrance for the 20 school children who perished a year ago in the Madia school dorm fire. At a press conference today, opposition member of parliament Ganesh Mahipal said the opposition has supported the government's planned memorial site for the victims in Region 8, but noted that such a site will not be significant enough for the trauma and pain caused to the Madia community, the survivors and the country as a whole. Given the national collective grief and horror over this tragedy, we believe that we must memorialize the event in a manner that will not cause it to slip out of the national memory and consciousness due to time or lack of visibility and prominence. We therefore recommend that along with any physical memorial structure in Madia, May 21st must be annually designated and observed as Madia Children Fire Victims Day. He said such an annual observance will not only allow the nation to collectively remember the tragedy and the victims, but it will also provide a nation with the opportunity to higher standards of public administration, moral duty, professional conduct and governmental responsibility and accountability. These 20 young lives must not be lost in vain. To honor them truly and meaningfully the country must be made a better, safer, and more caring place for children and all other vulnerable and dependent citizens. To continue as before or with mere cosmetic changes is to dishonor them, make 
made, make May 21st an annual observance to honor them with dignity. Gather was thrown into mourning in May of last year when an early morning fire ripped through the girls' dormitory at the Madia school, killing 20 of the children there and injuring many others. A teenage student from the same school who's accused of setting the fire has since been charged on 20 counts of murder. A 27-year-old man from Tuckville here in Georgetown lost his life last night in a smash-up with a large truck at Maikoni on the east coast of Demerara. The dead youth has been identified as Jonathan Gomes. A police report of the incident stated that at around 8.15 last night, as Gomes was driving his car along the roadway, he overtook several cars and ended up in the path of the truck that was being driven in the opposite direction. The police said according to information it received, the driver of the truck attempted to pull to the side of the roadway to avoid a collision, but the car still slammed into the front side of the truck. The driver of the car, Jonathan Gomes, was pulled from the mangled wreck in an unconscious state and taken to the Maikoni Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The driver of the truck was taken into custody and administered a breathalyzer test, which provided a negative result for alcohol in his system. A post-mortem examination is to be conducted on the body of the 27-year-old Jonathan Gomes, who died in the crash. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo. From its pristine rivers to its abundant resources, it's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. Our commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming and we're all part of it. Guyoil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Gaia's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Gaia has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Full of flavor, flavor, flavors. Bust the flavors that my craver. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors. Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors. Yeah, taste busta. Grab a busta. Bust the flavor, taste the savor. Busta. Bust the flavor, flavors. Busta. Bust the flavor, flavors. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Swetlana Marshall in the region. Three Christian missionaries from missions in Haiti were shot and killed in an ambush by a gang in Haiti, the Oklahoma-based group said on Friday. According to Reuters, the missionaries were taking shelter in a house when gang members began shooting at the residents at about 9 p.m., 
Thursday. Months of gang violence in Haiti have forced the government into retreat, and the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has warned the country is close to becoming a failed state. Haiti's main international airport in Port-au-Prince reopened this week, nearly three months after it shut due to deadly gang-related violence. But gangs still control much of the capital and Haiti's main seaport remains closed. A spokesperson for the White House National Security Council said the Biden administration was aware of reports of the deaths of U.S. citizens and offered condolences. Missouri State Representative Ben Baker said his daughter Natalie Lloyd and son-in-law Davy Lloyd were killed while working as full-time missionaries. Davy Lloyd was the son of the organization's founders, David and Alicia Lloyd, who started it in 2000. The identity of the third person killed has not been released. In a Facebook post, Baker said his heart was broken into a thousand pieces. Billionaire property developer Peter Verde, also known as Hardip Singh, has found himself in legal hot water as he's facing charges of bribery alongside the company he directs. The accusation stems from alleged actions between January 2015 and July 2017, during which Verde purportedly bribed Astot Michael, a former member of parliament and government minister of tourism in Antigua and Barbuda. The National Crime Agency, NCA, detailed the accusations, asserting that the bribes were intended to benefit PV Energy Limited, a company under Verde's directorship. Michael, now an independent member of parliament in Antigua was allegedly the recipient of these bribes. And finally tonight, international news. The UN's top court, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, has issued a dramatic ruling ordering Israel to immediately halt its military offensive in Rafa, according to the BBC. It acted in support of a South African application last week, which sought a number of measures against Israel, accusing it of stepping up what it says is a genocide. The presiding judge said the situation in Gaza had deteriorated since the court last ordered Israel to take steps to improve it. Israel has vehemently denied the allegation and signaled it would ignore any order to halt its operation. Reading the court's ruling on Friday, the judge said Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in Rafa, which could bring about the physical destruction of the Palestinians, alluding to what constitutes genocide under international law. Israel, he said, must also allow unimpeded access to Gaza to any UN body investigating allegations of genocide. The ruling also reiterated a requirement for Israel to enable the unhindered provision of scale of basic services and humanitarian aid for Gaza. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.